Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and I am here for another Sunday sew along. We're starting a new sew along today. All right, so two weeks ago we finished up the Ziggy, the Style Arc Ziggy motorcycle jacket. That was a beast of a pattern. <laughs> But this time we are going to tackle trousers. This is possibly my favorite trouser pattern. Maybe pant pattern. But probably definitely, I mean, I would, I would pretty confidently say it's my favorite trouser pattern. So um, this is the Itch to Stitch Upland Trousers. Um, it comes in her size range from her... Did she get under a double zero to a size 40? I'll put the hip range here, <laughs> uh, arbitrary numbers, right? So I'll put the um, the hip range that, her pat that the pattern comes in. Um, it is a, uh, sits at your natural waist, but features a faced waist waistband as opposed to, or waistline as opposed to a waistband, um, which I find to be very comfortable. I've spoken ad nauseum about my fluctuating waistline. And even though this sits at my natural waist, I just find it so much more comfortable than a waistband. Now, one of the things I think that can throw people off with faced waistband with faced waistlines is that um, they can stretch out. But she's got a very cool trick in here in putting um, clear elastic into that seam uh, at the top of the waist with where you connect it to the facing that really makes things keep their shape and it's genius. So. <laughs> Let's talk today about supplies. Um, I have made this pattern, this will be my third pair. Um, I'm not gonna do a muslin on this one just because I have made it a few times, but helpful, I know pants can be a real booger for a lot of people. So some helpful resources if you are having a lot of a hard time fitting pants. Number one, um, oh gosh, the complete guide Oh, it's a really long title. It's Sarah Veblen's book, The Complete Guide to Fitting. Where is my copy? Is it in here? <laughs> I will, um, yeah, it's a long title. It's Sarah Veblen's book, though, um, and it's got photos and stuff and really helps with fitting in all sorts of things, but including pants. Um, Love Notions has a couple of, if you own any of their pants patterns, they have workbooks that are included with those that have a lot of really great fitting information. And then recently I bought the um, Jenny Rushmore, Cash who's the face behind Cashmereette, um, her newest book, or her only book, her book, uh, Ahead of the Curve. And um, even though the patterns in there are for sizes 12 to 32, the fitting information in there is phenomenal. So some of you may not fall into that size range, but I would suggest that book, if for nothing, just for the fitting information. I just really like the way she fits. Um, and she's got a lot of really great information there. So at some point I would like to provide more fitting information for you guys. And like, I, I need models is basically what it comes down to. So I'm gonna have to scrounge up some friends to do some uh, fitting videos and stuff with an actual model because, um, I mean, there's only so many times I can show you my fitting adjustments. <laughs> Um, my daughter really doesn't need any, so yeah, I need more friends to come in so we're, that have more advanced um, or maybe harder to diagnose fit issues. Um, anyway, so yeah, so we're just going to kind of dig in um, with sewing of these pants. So I would think this is probably going to be a three to four week sew along. I have not started filming it up, obviously, because I've got the fabric here in my lap. Um, but yeah, I would anticipate it being three to four weeks. So let's get started on the supplies we need. Fabric. I have made these pants in a, it's it's a non-stretch pattern, but I have made these pants in a stretch cotton twill, and um, they're very comfortable and they work great. But because of that elastic that goes into that seam line, um, it keeps your pants up. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can use a stretch um, bottom weight fabric if you want, and it may be just a little bit more comfortable for you. Um, but I've also made it non-stretch fabric, and um, they were, I mean, I wear them around, I wore them all winter, so and very comfortably. So it's just kind of up to you. But any kind of your heavier bottom weight fabrics. So I'm talking, you could make these out of denim if you wanted to, that would be really cool. Um, I get quite, uh, questions on if people are wanting to make a pair of like khaki pants or chino type pants, what fabric to look for. Um, that would mostly, I think what you would equate to that could be a cotton twill, but probably it's a brushed cotton twill. Um, and if you search those at different you know sites, 
you can find a very similar fabric to like a Dockers type of thing, but you could definitely use fabric like that. You could make these in a fancier, like a wool if you wanted to. You could even line them if you really wanted to. Um, you could make this out of linen. And again, because you're putting that elastic that's there kind of in the um, seam line and it doesn't gather anything up. It's not like putting elastic into your, you know, into a waistband. It just keeps things really stable in that seam line. It's just very smart. <laughs> she does that in her Mountain View pull-on jeans too. It's just a very smart technique uh, and works really, really well. Um, but yeah, you can make these in a heavier weight linen. The fabric store has that beautiful heavyweight linen. I think that would be great in something like that. Um, gosh, you could make these in, I mean, any canvas. You could make them in any kind of bottom, heavier weight, bottom weight fabric. Um, and they'd be really beautiful. You don't need a lot, I mean, drape really at all. I mean, I, I don't know that I would make these out of like a viscose twill or a rayon twill or a tinsel twill. This is too drapey. And these are more, um, because they are tailored and they've got, you know, the pockets that are very flattering um, <laughs> as well. But you don't want any of that to like droop open. Um, so yeah, I would stick with fabrics that have a little bit more body. Um, but yeah, great option. Oh, corduroy. I've made them in corduroy. Um, they'd be beautiful in like a velvet teen, like a cotton velvet teen. Regular velvet would be way too drapey, but a velvet teen, which is the cotton that is nice and structured, would be really cool pair of pants, actually. Um, <laughs> but yeah, kind of sky's the limit, any kind of stuff like that. So for my pair, hold on, I don't want to dump out all of my notions here. For my pair, I'm actually using, this is a cotton twill from, that I got from Destashify. And this beautiful, um, it's a very warm camel color, which is my camel. But um, yes, I am using this. I still don't know how much fabric I have. I have washed it, um, but it is just, yeah, a cotton twill. So um, it's gonna make a really nice pair of pants. I have my, um, Chai Town Chino pants that I wear, they're a little bit lower rise um, that I made last spring. And while they still technically fit, because they are a little bit lower, they're like a mid rise, so they are below my problem area when my waist is fluctuating with inflammation, um, they're still fitting a little snug. I have put on weight that I can't all blame all on <laughs> inflammation, unfortunately. But um, they're just getting a little snug and they're just not as comfortable as they were last spring. But the fabric I used for that is phenomenal and I'll link it down below if it's still available. I got it from Minerva, but it is like prime khaki pant type um, fabric and would make a beautiful pair of uplands. And, and they had it in a few different colors. So I will link that fabric down below if you want something similar. But yes, this is what I'm gonna be using from Destashify. And actually, by the time you're watching this video, you would have already seen the finished pants, but I'll pop a picture of me in them just so you can see that as well. Love this pattern. So this is gonna work really, really great. And then the other things you're gonna need are, oops, a zipper. And really for these, you don't need a heavy duty zipper um, because they're not super fitted through the hips. So I just use like a typical nylon, um, this is either a seven or a nine inch, I can't remember. But I like to do a fun color, because then you can, I mean, the only person that sees it's you when you're like going to the bathroom, but I think it's fun. <laughs> but yeah, I've used nylon zippers on all the other two pairs um, that I've made, and um, yeah, this works, this works really well. Um, you will need a button to close them, but alternatively, I did do a um, button on my first pair, but my second pair, my corduroy pair, I just closed those with a hook and bar, like a pants or skirt hook and bar. Um, so it keeps everything very um, sleek on the front, and I really like the way that that looks as well. So if you're doing something a little bit um, nicer or fancier, you may wanna keep it a little more sleek and not put a button. And that's an option to put in the um, hook and bar on that. But I'm gonna be using a pants button from Wawak. It kinda looks like a tortoiseshell. Can't remember the color of this. As always, I'll leave everything linked down below. You'll need interfacing for the um, pockets. She has you interface the line just to keep those pockets from stretching out as well as the um, um, facing. We'll need interfacing as well. And I just thought of something that I am changing for the um, pattern. And I will go and show you that. But sorry, sometimes my brain. And I'm also using bias tape. Um, you can use pre-made stuff you've made yourself. 
uh, whatever. This is just some leftover of the Lady McElroy cotton lawn that I used for my daughter. But I like to finish off my facing with um, bias binding instead of you know, serge or whatever. I just think it's a fun little detail. So I'll be showing you how to do that. So you'll need a little bit of bias tape. Um, and I don't think that's not included in the pattern. It's a little something extra I'm going to do. And then you need the clear elastic. I like the three eighths inch clear elastic from Wawak. Uh, this will be going into the seam line where our facing meets our, um, top of our pant. Now, this does have a zip fly, but this does not go in the same way that I do my regular zip flies that have a waistband at the top because of the facing going in. Um, and actually when I made my corduroy pair, I had to like unpick because I just went right on ahead and put the <laughs> zipper in the way I normally put zippers in. Um, and yeah, I had to go back and unpick. So I will be doing the zip fly just a little bit differently because it does have the facing that goes on the bottom and you're finishing things off, you know, on the edge there as you go. So um, yes, that'll be something that we'll do as well. Now, while I'm thinking about it, so this pattern has darts in the back and also darts in the front. My very first pair I made that are in the stretch twill, and I can still wear those comfortably because I think they are a stretch, but um, I sewed the darts. But for my corduroy pair that I made this winter, I omitted the darts, I just didn't sew them, and lengthened my waistband accordingly, or my facing accordingly, to accommodate that extra. Um, that I wasn't going to be sewing into a dart and those fit me so much better. So I have a little fuller tummy. Um, I carry weight in my lower tummy. Um, I also had twins and had a C-section and so I've got flesh that hangs over a C-section scar and you know what I mean, whole thing. Um, but I a lot of times will find, and because I'm so straight through my hips for my his, hip to weight ratio is very um, small, like I don't have much of a difference between my hips to waist. Um, I find that I can omit usually front waist darts. You always need the back waist darts because everyone's butt dips in a little bit um, and mine does dip. Um, so I do always keep the back darts, but the front darts a lot of times, if you don't have a big hip to weight waist ratio or if you carry a bit of little, little bit of extra room there in your um, tummy, sometimes you can just omit those and I find it looks just a little sleeker and a little, um, just lies a little flatter. Um, yeah, so. I'll be omitting those darts, but we will talk about that. And before we end here today, I'm gonna take you over to the cutting table and um, show you all your pieces and what fabric you need to have them cut out. I'll show you what's been interfaced, and then I'm gonna show you the pattern pieces for the front and also for the waistband, which are the only alterations that I'm making other than I am shortening the leg of these um, just by an inch. So I think, I think I'm gonna shorten. I've not cut into these yet. We'll wait. Sometimes with cotton and I want to wear like a little bit of a heel with things, I'll leave it be um, and then maybe go back and shorten it later. Because again, even though I'm only 5'2", my um, legs are long in proportion to the rest of my body. I'm very short in my torso. <laughs> so sometimes I like to really elongate the legs even more and put like a pointed heeled shoe under my pants and then it makes my legs look long and we use that nothing on me is long but proportionally my legs are long and compared to the rest of my body all right so there you have it that is everything that you need i will take you over to the cutting table we will look at everything and all of our pieces cut out and then next week we will start sewing as always leave any questions you have down below if you like this type of content and would like to help support the channel i do have a coffee account that's linked down below which is like a virtual tip jar and everything i make from that goes right back into the channel supplies and mostly this type of video the tutorials and sew alongs um because they're a little bit more expensive to make so the my equipment the supplies um all that kind of stuff that goes into the making of the tutorials, that sort of thing. Okay, that's all I have for today. Let me know if you have questions and I'll meet you at the cutting table. All right, here are all of our pieces all cut out and ready to go. I'm gonna go through them where I've put interfacing, where I have marked, where I've yet to interface. And I'm gonna talk about um, one particular fitting, um, well, a couple of fitting things that I that I have done, but one in particular that I was asked about. Okay, so here are all of our pieces here. We have first got our front um, pocket facing, and um, I've cut this out of quilting cotton. Uh, my fabric is pretty thick, but even with my, I mean, I think all of my pairs, I've used quilting cotton for the pocket facing. You will need to use um, regular fabric, the um, main fabric for your front pocket, because that shows. But for the pocket facing, I use quilting cotton. I've just gone with something fun because why not? Um, and I've already gone ahead and applied a line, I don't know if you can see it very well, but a, a line of stay tape um, right here on that 
basically this edge, this, this um, angled edge, so that that pocket piece doesn't stretch out. Um, because this will get sewn to the front of the pant, it just keeps that pocket laying nice and flat. I've used woven stay tape, my um, Silk Easy woven stay tape, but you could easily use a lot, um, just a little strip of uh, fusible interfacing there too. Just something to stabilize that edge. So there is the pocket facing, and then the regular front pocket again is cut out of um, the self fabric, because that does show. And then <clears throat> I've got some um, bias binding that I'm going to use to bind my facing. I've just cut some strips, and I'll actually, I'm gonna show you how I do my bias tape um, because I've had some questions on that. So I've gone ahead and cut three strips because I think when those are all sewn together that those should be good. So I've got those all cut out and we'll put, do that in one of the um, lessons. I've got my fly shield that gets cut out on the fold. It's all cut out. And then <clears throat> my front facing here. Now you'll notice that I have extended the uh, this front edge here. This is the part that goes to the center front of the pant. I've actually extended that because I'm going to omit the um, front dart. Um, and the front dart is, at least for the size eight, is um, seven eighths of an inch, which means I would need to add seven eighths of an inch to the front of this. I've added more. I think I've added an inch and a half, to be honest, um, just for extra, just to make sure I have enough um, there in the facing, um, but I'll just trim off the excess. So it's better to have too much than not enough. So I think I've extended it an inch and a half um, to accommodate the loss of that dart. So got my front facing cut out. There's two of them and I've interfaced both pieces. So that is one alteration I've made. Um, and then my front flight interfacing I have, um, I cut it out of interfacing and went ahead and fused it to the front of the pant. This is the wrong side, obviously, that's up. And I've gone ahead and I fuse my interfacing first, then I go ahead and mark this notch, which is at the base of the zipper. We will need that. Also, if you are going to sew your dart, and I will talk you through that if you're going to do that, um, you would have need to have marked your um, end point of your dart. Um, I'm obviously leaving mine, so I didn't have to worry about that. So there's my front piece. Now, I have made zero alterations to the front of the pant other than just omitting the dart. I'm just ignoring it. Um, but I've not even adjusted the length because I think I want these to be longer. Um, and I don't think I adjusted the length on my corduroy pair so that I can wear them with, well, it allows for some shrinkage because this is cotton. Um, even though it's been washed, it probably will shrink up a little bit more. But also I want to be able to wear these with a little bit of like a heel. Not a lot, but a little bit. Or something with a, like a platform type. Yeah, I think. Better to be too long than not long enough. So there is my everything to do with the front. All right. And now for my back, um, I've only made one alteration, and we'll talk about that here in a second. All right. So I have cut out my... Um, Four, this is the welt pockets um, for the back welt pockets. So you cut out four of fabric and then six of interfacing. But I'm going to recommend instead of cutting these out, this is an inch wide and let's see, a little over one, two, three, four, five, six and a quarter probably long. Um, I do mine in one long strip, interface it, and then cut everything out. It just makes everything, it's just easier. So I, instead of cutting out, you know, the interfacing and then cutting out the pieces, um, at least for these four. I interface it and then cut them out, just, again, easier. And um, also, you'll have two of these interfacing pieces that are cut from this that are going to get attached to the back of the pant, but I do that later. So don't do anything with that now. So I've got those four strips and then these two pieces of interfacing that um, haven't been fused yet. All right, and then we've got our little buttonhole loop or our... Um, that we'll be using for the, that back pocket. You just have one of those. You've got your back pocket facing. I've got two of those. And then my back pocket that I've also cut out of that quilting cotton. There's two of those. Make sure you get all your notches cut out nicely. And then my back facing I left as is because I will be sewing the dart on that. Um, so yeah, I left it as is and interfaced that piece. All right, and then for my back, um, I have marked my dart. I've marked the point of my dart and I've clipped into my dart legs, but I have not marked my pocket yet because you will notice that this pocket, you know, it's all skewed 
funny right now because when the dark gets closed, then it will true all of that up. So it's just really hard to mark your points until after you've sewn your dart. So I'm going to sew my dart and then I will attach the um, little facing strips that we have already cut out and then I will mark my pocket piece after I've sewn the dart. So that will come in, um, I think, I think next week we're going to do the front of the pants and get the fly started and then the following week we'll do the back of the pants. So um, it'll be a couple of weeks still, but yes, I've not done anything with the interfacing on that. But the question I got about, um, sure you can see fine uh, about a fitting thing and again there's so many great fitting um, books and stuff out there but I would highly recommend Ahead of the Curve by Cashmere. it is so good and easy and simple and makes such good sense but this is something it's in the book but it's something I've done um, for quite a few years because I have this same issue but it is the issue of the wedgie <laughs> now this works for the front and the back Oh, so the back and the front. So if you have an issue with like it kind of cutting up a little bit um, in the front as well, the same thing can work. Because a lot of times it has nothing to do with, sometimes it can be that your rise is too short and it's just pulled up too high. But sometimes it's just the way the pants cut in and it'll, it'll um, cause some wrinkling in the front. In the back, it's usually just it's cutting up into your rear end. But the it's just the shape of the crotch curve basically. And what I do, I've already done it on this pattern, so I'm not going to do it again, but I will show you with a pencil what you do. Um, and then I'll just erase it because it's already been done on this pattern. But at the deepest part of the curve, and you don't even need to do very much, like a quarter of an inch to three-eighths of an inch. I do three-eighths just because I found that that's what works for me. You're going to go in on that curve um, a quarter of an inch, three-eighths of an inch. It's, again, amazing. And make a mark. And then you're going to start at the front here where it's supposed to be at the end seam. And you're just, you could freehand this. You can um, do this with a, a French curve, but you're just scooping that curve out a little bit more. And then you would cut this off. I freehand it more times than not. And that right there, my friends, will fix your wedgie issue. I also understand that it doesn't make sense that if something seems too tight going up into your rear end, why would you go, why would you sew it, you know, take away? Because usually that means you're making something smaller. When you're dealing with crotch curves and when you're dealing with arm size, they work the same very similarly. It is making more room for the body part that fits in. So I know it seems counterintuitive. You don't need to add anything to side seams or anything else. Trust me, this is making room for your butt. Um, where you carry your fullness of your butt. My daughter does not have the same shape rear end I do, but her butt is lower, and so the fullness of her rear end it hangs lower on her rear end, so I have to do the same thing for her as well. I have a bubble butt. So, I mean, I, I guess it's my fullness is at the bottom of my rear end too, but um, even though our rear ends aren't shaped the same, um, it's just where we carry the fullness, and um, yeah, that will fix that problem, and you don't have to add anything to anything else. I know it seems counterintuitive, but try it, and I think you'll be surprised. <laughs> so there you have it. That's what I do to fix what the wedgie issue. Um, but I don't have to make any adjustments to the um, rise on this. Again, even though I'm only 5'2", I am very short in the body, but my rise is, sometimes I have to adjust it, but most of the time it fits like standard sizing um, because I'm longer for my height um, proportionally at the, from the waist down than I am my body uh, on the top half. <laughs> Very short torso and longer legs proportionally. So usually I can get away with leaving the rise as is. So yeah, that is all of the adjustments. That's everything that we need to do, all the interfacing that needs to be added. And um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below. And I will see you back next week and we will start sewing the front and I think get the, um, the zipper fly put in ish. There's, you only put it in kind of cause it gets finished off with the facing, which obviously we'll do at the end. But yes, that is what we will be doing next week. So I will see you all then.